Good morning. I uh, would like to start out just by thanking these guys from Blue Fountain Media over here. Uh, Gabe came to me a couple months ago and said, hey, we're holding this seminar out in New York in September and we'd love to have you guys come out from Google, give a little bit of a presentation and uh, just talk about the great work that you guys are doing. And I really appreciate that opportunity and that chance. And thank you guys all for coming out too on a Wednesday morning here at 8.30. It's, uh, it's a little bit early for us on the West Coast. We don't come in until around 11, but you know, I suppose we can adjust to the East Coast vibe. It's all good. So as, uh, as Gary mentioned, uh, part of what we're, you know, this whole day is themed around is sort of that conversion funnel and about driving leads through to the very end and finding really good constructive ways to do that. Uh, and one of the things that we at Google have been trying to do is, is find ways to really find good leads at the top of the funnel with some interesting targeting methods. Uh, and so I wanted to start out today just by talking about kind of how different the world of today is from the world of about 30 years ago. And so I love this picture. This is my favorite thing to start with because it's actually representative of what my living room looks like. In fact, when I go home to Ohio with my mom or my dad and I sit down and I'm sitting with my, my nine-year-old niece, we are all watching television, typically. We've got the news on, CNN. We're watching The Big Bang Theory or something else. And typically, I'm sitting on the left-hand side with my laptop out, tapping away. My niece is sitting, my nine-year-old niece is sitting with her iPhone, because nine-year-olds need iPhones, right? And my dad's sitting over with his tablet, checking baseball scores, right? And this is, this is the whole family. This is almost every house that I go into, every family. And if you guys think about it, if you think about the way that you interact with your family at home, I imagine that there's a similar picture that pops into your mind. And so I just kind of want to start out with a thought exercise. If we back up about 26 years ago, to about 26 years ago, it's 19, 1989 roughly, the last Indiana Jones movie has just come out. What is the top television show in the US? Any ideas, any guesses? Seinfeld, not quite. ER, Nash, close. It's the Cosby Show, I heard it from over there. That's right. And how much of the U.S. audience do you think was watching The Cosby Show on a week-to-week -week basis? 15%? 15%? Close? 20%? It's actually 25%. In fact, about like 75 million people were tuning into The Cosby Show week-to-week, -week, which is mind-blowing to me, right? Because I've only ever lived in a world where we have like 5,000 channels and like six people watching each of those channels. If we fast forward to 10, 10 years down the road, it's 1996, 1997, what's the top show now? We mentioned it already. Seinfeld. What's the audience there? 7%. It's a little bit higher than that. It's actually still about 22%, so we just drop off about 3% over the decade, right? But, like I just said, if we fast forward 10 years from there to about 2008, 2009, we've now got umpteen channels. And what do you think the top audience capturing show is? Yeah, it's like American Idol, The Voice, those kinds of shows, right? And what do you think they get in their top week during the season? About 5 to 6 percent. That's exactly it. And so the interesting thing about those shows is not only is the audience fragmented in terms of what they're watching on television, but American Idol and The Voice and Big Brother and all these reality television shows, they actually ask you to take out your device during the show and start doing other stuff, right? Vote for your favorite contestant. Or like vote to see what America can do to these poor people in this house. <laughs> so not only is the audience fragmented, but the attention span during the watching is, is fragmented. And that's a really interesting <laughs> thing. Google actually mandates that I have at least one slide with really small print on it and a lot of words. It's true. <laughs> and so this is that slide, getting it out of the way early. Just to drive it home, 80% of 18 to 29 year olds actually have smartphones in the US, right? And in fact, at all levels, at all ages, adults are using the internet. 50 to 64 segment, 83% using the internet on a regular basis. Digital, continually growing, the number one medium passing television for the first time ever in 2013. And this was the really mind blowing thing to me. 100 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute. And actually 500 years of YouTube videos watched only on Facebook every day. That's mind-blowing, right? Never in history have we had such a, just a, a crazy reach and the crazy ability to talk to our customers. And so from a marketing perspective, right, as, uh, as Gary mentioned, I've worked for the past two years with small and medium-sized business advertisers. I've worked with probably about 1,500 of them in total. And they're always asking me, how do we find our customers? How do we actually find them? 
And the thought here actually is you've invited an ads guy to a presentation and he's actually only gonna talk about Google Analytics, as crazy as that all is. Because that's how we find our audience. That's how we find a real audience. And so, you know, I wanna introduce the concept of interest category marketing in a new way, because it's certainly not a new idea, by showing off a couple different real examples, real life examples, of affinity targets and the types of people that we can see when we start to leverage the data we have in our Google Analytics pages. So on our left here, we have our 32-year-old male thrill seeker. And you can tell he's a thrill seeker because he's got these like really rounded glasses and he's got his button up all the way to the top. He's really going out every weekend, doing his water sports and kayaking and he loves his auto enthusiasm too. He actually drives a Ferrari. It's great. On the right, we've got our 32-year-old male who's a savvy parent. He's a technophile. And when he comes to New York for a vacation, he stays at one place and one place only. The Gansevoort. <laughs> Classy hotel. So these guys are great, right? But the question is, how would we actually know that they're our audience? Because uh, if I'm selling, say I'm selling financial insurance or something like that, life insurance, I don't, you know, I'm going to sit down and, and I'm going to try and figure out who to target, but I don't really know. I have some idea of what my offline demographics look like. I know that the, probably the, the person that I'm looking for is 35 to 44. They're probably upper income. They probably have these certain uh, gender preferences and when it comes down to doing the sale. But we don't really know how that translates online. And so we try and come up with all these different proxy measures, brand surveys, different ways to look at it. And what we often neglect to do is actually just take a quick peek in our analytics. And so that's what I want to talk about here for the, the rest of the presentation. When we peek in, and, 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 and Blue Fountain Media is very good at doing this and making sure that uh, when they sit down with customers, that they sit down and look at this data. But when we peek into our analytics, we can actually start to understand these demographic behaviors. And so on the left here, this is a, a snapshot from our, uh, our Google store. And we sell all kinds of different Google swag online. And so the question is, like, who's buying that? If we were to start a marketing campaign, who would we target? And so what we actually see on the left here are the overall sessions on the website, broken down by age, 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, so on and so forth. And on the right side, we actually have the converters on the website. So we're actually saying, hey, who got to the website and actually made a purchase happen? And so what most people would say is that, oh, of course, 25 to 34, that's like our highest converting segment. Duh, we should target them, right? But I would challenge that and say, if we broke down the data a little bit more, what we'd actually find is 35 to 44 accounts for just uh, like 20%, around 20% of the overall traffic to the website, but actually around 25% of the conversions. And so what we can see from that is that we have a slight edge in terms of conversion rate with 35 to 44 probably more disposable income. We could start to think about why that's the case. But we actually don't stop there. We go one level deeper and we want to start to understand the different affinities that our customers have. And the cool thing about this is these line up one-to-one -one with targeting across our display products, across our video products. And so we can start to see technophiles and movie lovers and about 1,700 other different affinity categories that we have for things that people like and care about. And we can actually get down to the orders and the conversion rates for the orders. And so what we can do is we can build a very layered campaign with, say, the right age and the right gender and the right affinity category and any other layers that we need on top of it to actually make leads go from the top of the funnel to the bottom. So this is an example of uh, such a campaign. This was actually a campaign that I built for a financial services company. And of course, I sit down with a financial services company and I say, what's your target? And they say, oh, it's uh, you know, 35 to 44 investment bankers who need this product. And I'm like, all right, then, that's great, that's great. We put the code on the website for a couple months, we sit on the data, and we come back and analyze it, and we find out that actually the audience that we're tagging for them is male, 35 to 44, but they're not people who are in the financial services and investing topic or category. They're actually in home and garden, and not only are they in home and garden, but they're actually in living room, right? And that's just a disconnect because we think that if somebody's going to work and doing financial services all day, that obviously they must come home and do financial services all day. But that's not the case. They spend some time on those websites from work, but they also spend time doing other things, looking at living room furniture, looking at furnishings, looking at home and garden websites, how-tos, DIYs, all those things. 
And so we created this campaign, we targeted it. We had really good results from it, I can't share them, but they were pretty wonderful. Everyone was thrilled. And so that's the idea here. We want to layer in demographics like gender and age with affinity categories. We don't want to just go out back and put up a billboard with all the different affinity categories on it, throw a blindfold on and throw darts. We want to actually take your website data, build the right targeting from it to find a really great ROI. And the Blue Fountain Media team is great at this. Chris is going to talk all about driving leads through that conversion funnel in her next presentation. I was blown away yesterday by it. I want to kind of close out here with just pointing out that the average person sees around 5,000 ads every day, and I was, this, my mind was blown again here. But actually, when I stopped to think about it, I thought that was really true. And then I thought, how many of those do I actually see? How many of those 5,000 ads do I ignore every day? And when it comes to the internet, actually about 56% of those ads are ignored. Banner ads, image ads, static ads, video ads, 56% roughly, just across all industries. And so what we actually did uh, to try and, and get beyond that is create really engaging ad formats when it comes to this kind of top of the funnel advertising. So we redefined CPM. CPM is cost per milli for those that aren't uh, advertising moguls in the room. It means the cost you pay for a thousand impressions. The average website on the internet or the average ad platform on the internet charges CPM rates and they charge regardless of whether or not the ad is actually shown on the page. It just has to load. We redefined CPM into a viewability standard. So the ad actually has to fully appear on the page in order for you to pay. We wouldn't uh, have this ad be paid for. It's not on the screen. So we're continually trying to innovate and find new ways to, to push out ad formats and help advertisers. We've also got the TrueView ad format. And I just, I love this little video walkthrough. Really helps you understand. TrueView can be anywhere from 30, 15 seconds to a minute and a half long. And the key to TrueView is that after five seconds, you actually get the ability to skip the ad. The user has the option to engage, or if they're bored, to skip. And so even all the way up to the 20 second mark here that we're coming up on, there's still no billing that occurs to the advertiser. We can go all the way up to the 30 second mark, and that's when the billing happens. And that's a really powerful ad format. Again, it's, 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 if you think about it, it's in the DNA of Google. When we started with text ads, we weren't charging based on the amount of impressions that we were showing. We were charging based on users that had raised their hand, or their finger rather, and chosen to click on those ads and engage. And so when we think about it from any perspective, from a display advertising ad, from a video ad, we want to make sure that users are engaged with what you're putting out there. And lastly, we're starting to come out with a lot of really cool engagement advertisements, things that you can hover over and pull out on to see and experience, things that are non-invasive and non-intrusive. And Ashley's going to give some great shadow on that later on, too. She's going to show you some great ad formats that uh, Blue Fountain has worked on, actually. And so lastly, if I could just have you guys walk out of here with like three key things from this presentation, it's the world has changed, right? We're no longer able to just put an ad out there and reach 25% of any audience. We have to think really hard as marketers. Our job has gotten much more complex. But we're trying to find ways to make it easy and find ways to make it so that you can action on the data on your websites, the information that you have at your fingertips, for free. And we're trying to really bring engagement to advertising in ways that have never been done. We're trying to redefine industry standards and formats that are maybe disadvantageous but exist because of technical limitations from days long past.